Welcome to Shiny Side Out with Dave. And a big gap. No Mechie again. He's traveling. Still traveling. You're yet again traveling. What he did, he messaged me this week and said, You know, Dave, if I can find a quiet place with good Wi Fi, I'll let you know and I'll call in. That doesn't seem to have been um, the eventuation of his investigations. Didn't happen. Anyway, we're on WZZR, broadcasting from Australia for Revolution Radio on freedomslips.com, where it's more than just radio, so jump into the chat room if you can. This is show number 288. 288, it's awesome. It just keeps going, it doesn't go up, it's linear. Unlike everything else, it's linear. It's on air, online, and on your smart device, so grab an app to listen anywhere, or listen at home on the Grace Tabletop Digital Radio. If you haven't gotten yourself one of those, I think you miss, might be missing out. Talking about missing, if you missed Solaris' show with Keith Hunter, talking about North Korea and exotic technology, Scalar Weapons, 9-11, or 9 9-12, as we say now, so the uh, YouTube thing doesn't tell us we can't advertise. Awesome show, once again. But you know what? If you missed it, and you've only come in... He's not on the Riviera, R Riviera sipping martinis. That would be interesting if he was, because then he's lying to me, and I don't think he's lying. He doesn't do that kind of thing. And he's not in Barcelona, either. Not that I know of. But if you missed Solaris' show, you know what, it only cost $5. I was going to say five lazy dollars if you got those lying around. Guess what? It's really easy. You can just subscribe to the archives. Then you can have access to all of the host shows. See, the station archives them anyway. The hosts don't always utilize that. They don't always download their own shows. They don't put them on YouTube or do anything. They're available at the station, which is great for us. It's great for you. We're one of the very few shows that pops it onto YouTube. So we actually put our own show on YouTube. It's okay. Nighthawk agreed to it. So we're okay. Now, you can get access to all her shows, all her great guests, and it's a great thing to do. Subscribe. And if it's not Solaris' shows that you're interested in, because, you know, we follow on from her, there are so many other really good shows out there on Revolution Radio. You'll get access to those as well. Did you know that Mecky and I, we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we, we look after, live on, are grateful that we have access to and where I live, it's the Dark and Young people, and where Meki lives, it's the Daruk people. And we pay our respects to elders past, present, and future. If you don't know who the, the original custodians of the land were in your area, do some research, find out. I think it might be interesting. It's certainly an interesting adventure into who it was and where have they gone. Do they still exist? Can you talk to an ancestor? Can you do that in person? Without them hating you, of course. I think that's really important. Anyway, show number 288. This is the second of two shows, unless Mekki calls me up and says, Hey Dave, I found a quiet spot. He should be, from what I understand, he, he may very well be in Singapore this week. In last week, I think... He was, oh, he was still traveling, but between sites and on a plane at the time. So that was difficult for him. It is his job to fly around. I actually like that lifestyle. I like the flying around, living from a suitcase. I might have made a great, you know, international man of mystery, a spy or something, working through a three dollar agency. Hang on, I have to cough one second. <coughs> Oh, so I, I, I pushed the mute button on my mic and it didn't mute. I apologize. I would have loved that. Or a rock star or something like that. You know, someone who travels from place to place. Maybe in the future, maybe in the future I could do one of those paranormal. I could be a guest on one of those paranormal 
uh, conferences or the ET conferences or the experiences conferences where I could travel from side to side and speak at each one of these. Certainly contact in the desert wouldn't be a, uh, a, a terrible thing. I'd love that. That'd be great. But anyway, since I, I'm not adverse <laughs> to, uh, to traveling, I've done it in a lot of my jobs and I have been able to, uh, you know, to sit and just live out of the suitcase. I just love it. Maybe one day, one part of my life and I'll have to do it and then I won't like it. Maybe, ah, uh, you know, grass is greener, I suppose. All right. So the last time we spoke, which was last week, we were looking a little retrospectively at the week gone by. Now I reheard my show and only, <laughs> hey, wait, 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 let me back this up. So Mr. Rowe, maybe Mekki is a secret spy guy. That would be interesting. Then he would have also been lying about that to me and I don't think that's happened either. Uh, but I know Mekki would really enjoy to, uh, owning an Aston Martin, even though it was just, <laughs> just so fast. How do you know so much about this Mr. Rowe? Maybe it's you. Maybe you've got the Aston Martin and you're living in a safe house right now. <laughs> ah, yes. Anyway, uh, Mackie, Mackie and I uh, have identified a number of buildings which could very well be safe houses or, you know, secret agencies in Australia. Uh, you may do this yourself. Uh, don't Google them. That'll let the cat out of the bag so to speak be careful about and i've got a i've got a tech thing coming up anyway i want to talk about with you but uh, certainly don't google it that's just crazy that's crazy don't, don't do it you know, walk by the building or look at it from down the street or something like that but if you've gone by a building that has no markings at all and the door itself doesn't you know you can't see through it and people come and go i think you might be on a onto something. I really do. <laughs> oh, Mr. Rowe, I can't read half your comments out on air. They're very funny. If you're actually, if you're missing out and you don't know what I'm talking about by Mr. Rowe, we, we're the chat room and the chat room is so good that it's jam packed today. A lot of, it's full of a lot of people, a lot of listeners. You can listen to the station from there and you can also contribute and I can see it on, well, you know, all the hosts can see it while they're on, on air. And you can ask the host a question or you can comment and you normally find a lot of people will interact with each other on the topics that, or not that the hosts are talking about. So you can see how that works. Um, Mickey and our, our own app doesn't uh, have a chat. We found that people were, weren't being very nice to each other. So we disabled it. At least this way, look, the station's got it. We're happy with that. You can comment to your heart's content on any of the videos we put out as well. Feel free. You know, we respect your opinion as long as it really is your opinion. And if you've got a factual, you know, disagreeance with what we're talking about, please post the link, post your evidence, talk to us about it. We'll engage you. On our videos, whenever we've been asked a question, we have answered it in all of our forums when you know all the different media we're in if someone messages us we will talk to you personally it's only the it's only Mackie and i doing this and we want to ensure that everyone comes on our journey with us this is sounds very carl sagan but this is our journey this is what we are doing with our lives and as I think it's very important. So when you're listening to us, we're learning. And I hope you are too. And I hope what we're doing is giving you the information for you to make up your own mind. You don't have to believe what we say. We'd like it if you, if you didn't believe it and you look through our history of shows that you could see how we formulated our idea and we respect any, any new evidence that's what it's all about it's like if you suddenly turn the light switch off in your in your house and you have maybe you know like me I've young children 
one of them might be scared and the other one couldn't care less. And you say, why are you scared? I'm scared, Daddy. Don't like it. Turn the lights back on. What are you scared of? Oh, anything can happen. You've got a good imagination. So what are you scared of that your imagination is telling you that could happen? And then you'll hear an excuse for why they're scared. You go, well, it's not actually happening. The moment I turn the lights back on, none of that thing you were thinking of was real. You'll prove your brain right and suddenly you won't be scared anymore. So what are you actually scared of? What are you afraid of? What's your fear based on? Zilch. You have no input at all except for your imagination. So let it go. It doesn't exist. You know that doesn't work. Telling, a, telling, telling any young person that the only thing that they're scared of is their own imaginations, you know, scenarios, it goes nowhere. It doesn't actually help. Give me a cuddle or holding their hand or something helps a lot more because <laughs> they're with someone who could probably defeat their whatever it is they're imagining. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so let's put all that aside. Oh, and I think I might have forgotten where I was going with it. Oh, well, it was probably a good segue. So look, keep in touch with us, follow us, uh, like, hit the smash the like button, as the young people say, and uh, get on board with Revolution Radio, which is www.freedomslips.com. It's real easy. Jump in the chat room and talk to us. There you go. I think I went full circle with that idea. Now, last week, we well i was talking about a whole bunch of things and when i reheard my show again i was maybe a little disappointed at the at the theme the over over i overriding theme of the entire show seemed to be, maybe be my disappointment when you listen to it it didn't it wasn't fear porn but it it certainly didn't have an upbeat feel about the show and i apologize for that but as one of my friends, my true friends, said to me, Dave, it's like uh, you were, it's like you, you were in the in the analyst's chair. You know, how do you feel about your mother? Being asked Freudian questions. Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud. Yeah. So that's I'll maybe a little a little deep you were getting me it wasn't scripted there was no script for last week's show like there isn't today oh i've got some notes that i've written out yeah, but normally mackie and i have pages reams of of information for our show topics and our show cycles and we will eventually get through it but sometimes it's more than you know, it's very jam-packed info, so it's hard for us. But what we're doing is we're showing you where it comes from. We're showing you the idea based around it. We're showing you how we got to our conclusion of the item, just like the Black Knight satellite. Uh, I've got to cough one more time. Let's see if the mute button does work this time. Okay, that seemed to work that time. Thank you. So the Black Knight satellite, going into the research for the Black Knight Satellite uh, show, I was convinced that the Black Knight Satellite was real. Truly convinced. Mackie was a little, little bit of a skeptic. He wanted it to be real, but he really thought it probably wasn't. Because if there was such a thing, they wouldn't tell us. And nothing would ever escape the clutches of NASA and the, you know, secret agencies and, you know, so, we, the only thing that led us towards that was the mystery around it, naturally. Mysteries are good, you like to solve them. We don't know whether we solved it entirely, but I, I walked away from that at the end of, end of it with a, changed my belief that it was, it had to be real to it's probably just the blanket thing that they talked about the several photographs of the same object where it had crinkled up even further or was it just didn't maintain the same shape that it had 
So you might argue after this and say, you know what, Dave, I think maybe it was some kind of morphing spaceship. Well, absolutely, could, have, could be. But I do think that it was more likely that... <laughs> um, sorry, I just read another comment. Uh, more likely that it, it, simp it just was the blanket at that time and the photographs that were taken of it matched you know that shape and it was a good one and that's the one that got out but the other photos didn't get out they didn't do the rounds they didn't become viral they didn't become lore l-o-r-e so a little disappointing it's it's that hand picking of information from the information tree on a particular subject where people will only take a, a certain item off it and use that for their entire basis for it to be real whereas all the other evidence like a fruit tree doesn't all lead us down the same path and you know this this way of presenting information is a little disappointing sometimes i didn't believe all of the the way that you know it's it's this thing has been aggregated together from a whole bunch of things i didn't believe all of that there is still, a, you know, the glint of hope in my, in my, uh, you know, imagination that it is real. I still want it to be, but I did walk away with it a little disappointed, saying, "Well, maybe it's not so real." There is another object, though, on the upbeat side of it, that there is an object that is uh, in orbit around the sun, like we are, and it's slowly catching us, and it does go by apparently, but that that object um, isn't round. So it's not, you know, 500 miles across, which is about what a, a planetary sized object becomes a spherical. It's less than that. And it's maybe a little oblongish or squarish. You do your own research on that one. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag on that one. <coughs> oh, geez, this cough is terrible. Um, so another person here has said the cat's out of the bag already and yeah what's with everyone calling each other secret agents that's very funny probably coming from a secret agent i ah, gotcha anyway i wanted to talk about the, the big topic i think of this from a science point of view is cassini i don't want you to get all uptight oh he's talking science it's nasa it's in well, you know what 20 years in space and they, they ended its life, the Cassini spaceship, they ended its life. Euthanized, euthanized a spaceship, but for a good reason. And I, I've got, they've got a, a bunch of really cool facts around the Cassini project. Started in 1997, ended in 2017, 20 years. And the mission ended on Friday. If you're not aware of it, it ended on Friday. And the end of its mission was known as the Grand Finale. And that's a, a nice title for them to put on this deceleration and, you know, burning up in the atmosphere of Saturn. But it's very important that they did that. And I'll, I'll tell you that it must be recognized that the Cassini spacecraft was disposed of in the right way, in the correct way, in the way that was the most biological and hazard uh, confirmed way to avoid any contamination of any of the moons around Saturn because their pre-microbial life possible and the introduction of something that may contain microbial life from earth as in like you know what was in a fingerprint or hang on cough i'm just gonna have a drink of water hang on oh terrible this flu is so terrible you know you don't want it and i've heard it's about to ravage the northern hemisphere so good luck with that one um so what they did they recognized that the danger of 
colliding it with you know one of the moons of saturn because of their closeness to all possible life could have a, a detrimental impact now surprising that they have that much concern over a planet that may or may not have life yet and this planet is just being devastated <laughs> you know with science's back turned and it's all you know big industrial big farmer big food i'm going to avoid naming them independently so disappointing anyway let's push that aside so they intentionally the grand finale was to intentionally plunge cassini through the atmosphere burning it up and not like challenger like the other one oh what was the other shuttle oh you know it started with c as well uh it, like it made it burn it up in the atmosphere that way the pieces would get so hot it would burn everything off and uh what did you know what wasn't burnt up or you know become part of saturn's makeup it would add something maybe that might might not be there but it's so big it wouldn't care i think it's really important it took cassini seven years to get to saturn in the first place so there was only a 13 year period after that where it was able to get onto the meaty part of the project seven years of that 20 years was just getting there in the first place and uh if you're watching on youtube i've got uh, just a, a bunch small bunch of images and the first one is the image of the simulation of it burning up in the atmosphere obviously there's no one there to take a photo of it and it's a pretty good image Cassini's other um, project was the Huygens probe and the Huygens probe landed on Titan very interesting that it should do so the Huygens probe did something really cool it discovered two oceans oh sorry <coughs> the Cassini project discovered two oceans but one of those um was that there was liquid erosion on titan and um enceladus um and titan both have underground oceans that's pretty cool i think that's that's a big topper uh the image right now you you, you would be able to see is uh the the final bunch of orbits and uh mm -hmm. of cassini itself <clears throat> now the last orbit that triggered the grand finale was an interception or a nudge by titan as it as it flew by so that last little uh interference gravitationally from titan mm -hmm. was enough to decelerate it so the next pass through saturn it would touch the atmosphere and then I think it was five or, or six passes and that was enough to decay the orbit enough to collide <clears throat> go deep into saturn's atmosphere um four i've got some figures here which are really cool there was 4.9 billion miles traveled by cassini that's pretty cool there was 2.5 million commands executed in the 20 years and these numbers get smaller by the way so that's the interesting part when it took off it was 1200 say 12,000 so 12,593 pounds or if you're into kilos it's 5,700 kilos that's pretty cool that launch time after using up all its fuel it only weighed a third of that so down to 4,685 pounds. 453,048 images were sent back from it. That's almost half a million images. The data in total was 635 gigabytes. It's not a terabyte, but that's pretty good considering that it was sent 20 years ago so we're not working with today's tech it's 
last year or you know like two decades ago the technology from them <coughs> what else was there they did a total of 360 engine burns except of course the last one where they're trying to keep the camera stable sorry the um the oh the radio the radio dish stable pointed back to earth during its descent in the atmosphere and that didn't really work they didn't have the strength to keep going they said that they were down to one percent fuel with an error variance of two percent plus or minus two percent which means they probably already ran out of fuel huh there was in its lifetime 162 targeted flybys of saturn's moons which is really cool 83 minutes uh it took for the information to like it's especially the speed of light in minutes from saturn to earth 83 minutes just for your, your tech facts out there did you know 27 nations took part in the entire project that's cool 12 different scientific instruments were on board sending back telemetry what they were really hoping for was the testing of the atmosphere and getting some telemetry back on that but because the uh it, the, it tilted so much it wasn't able to transmit um <clears throat> now besides all of this i think the best thing cassini confirmed the existence of the hexagonal shaped cloud formation on saturn's north pole it confirmed it it showed it was there photos revealed it and over the seasons they didn't seem to move what's going on there <clears throat> we have on earth we have you know the jet stream and it's not solid and round and it's not hexagonal it's sort of shaped you know and, and undulates and changes it has like a an a morphing existence <clears throat> not consistent and certainly not hexagonal and there's yet another thing to try to come to terms with why is it hexagonal that's awesome we know that it's uh, many layers and it contains many different elements <clears throat> in the atmosphere in in a you know um in the midst of morphing between a gas maybe and a liquid or a solid um, where there's you know either the burnt version the carbonated version or it's two chemicals mixed together oh, it's, it's a tremendous thing but deep down greater than the earth's thickness is the atmosphere i'm convinced that maybe there's a solid rocky core and that the planet itself is more like a real planet but just with a super huge atmosphere on it that's what i'm thinking anyway because <clears throat> if it were just gas the pressure on the inside might be sufficient to have or maybe just a squirt less than what might make it like a red dwarf maybe maybe ignition if it was all gas might have been so close you do we just don't know <coughs> but it looks like the chemicals themselves that are in the atmosphere are a lot more than what it would have taken uh to have ignition you know there's chlorine I, I think i heard something about chlorine that chlorine's a pretty heavy element so you know saturn wasn't made with with the elements that were created in the big bang according to science the earth wasn't made and showered down onto with only elements from the big bang we're in a third or fourth generation star and that's the only thing 
that can account for being gold in the dirt on the planet must have come from a nova at some point so you gotta think about these things so <clears throat> but without going too far astray i'd like to mention that uh another topic this uh, this because that that was pretty good with my sciencey mates right and talk about cassini and the history and it was a good bit of fun but north korea honestly what kind of bad neighbor are they they're not your neighbor they're our neighbor but what kind of you know flouts the law kind of antagonizing action if that were just a regular neighbor in your street the whole south korea was a personality of one of your neighbors would they be the house that had all the junk in the front yard would they be the house that never mowed their lawn would they be the house that parked their car outside your place instead of outside their place would they be the car that borrowed all your stuff? Sorry, the house. <clears throat> well, I don't know. Maybe they're the, the, the people who complain to the council all the time about everybody else in the street. Or maybe it's a meth lab. How do you think their behavior fits into the way we would could describe maybe the neighbor? Are they just quiet and never and always kept to themselves which is the weird description as a correlation between that description and they're always being <clears throat> the house next door police taped because whenever there's a police tape around the house and the news crew comes out you know that the neighbors walk out and and there's always a you know a bit of pop fox that goes on to the to the news you know, if it was a stabbing or a murder or something discovered there. The next thing, the neighbors saying, well, you know, they were really quiet and they kept to themselves. <laughs> you don't want to be that people. You don't want to be the people described as are oh, really quiet and they kept to themselves. That sort of means you're a bit weird. So how is North Korea behaving? I don't know. They... They don't seem to be doing anything that the West is quite used to. <clears throat> Sanctions. Oh, we've stopped them going to the shops. We've stopped them selling on eBay. You know, we've limited the amount of petrol they can get. Oil, possibly. That's it. Is that supposed to stop a... <laughs> I don't know it for want of a better word and I don't want to use the word regime but he's, he clearly seems as though he's a dictator and I'm being nice so do you think he's forgotten about the previous Korean war I don't think so I think there's a grudge maybe you know, lie him in the chair and ask him Freudian questions. Analyze his way of thinking. What would you come up with? <coughs> <coughs> oh, a oh, part of me. I'm going to have to clean this audio up for the YouTube. But what would you get to? What What do you think the the thing in his mind, look, the, the Western media is telling us one thing, possibly about his motives and his flagrant, you know, sticking his fingers up, you know, maybe his middle finger is waving at the rest of the world. He's giving everyone the bird. Maybe he is, maybe he's not. Maybe, maybe he's, I'm not trying to make him like into a hero or anything right i'm just going to preface it with that because i can't see how he can paint himself out of this corner i don't know how his management structure is or what he does or how he operates 
or how his advisors are able to continue doing what they're doing obviously that's when when you get to the bottom of it you know denying most of the people everything and the few get everything then you've got your military layers where it seems just hell bent on joining the nuclear club because what happens when you join the nuclear club no one shoots you anymore that's it all the people in the nuclear club club haven't been to war again you you step up from being the little player to being the in the you know the executive team the executive key to the executive washroom you're you're a player you have a voice is he just trying to exercise the voice i don't know does he hold a grudge probably who's he aiming it at well it seems like everybody but in particular japan doesn't seem to like japan right now can you imagine the fear if you're in japan and you hear those sirens go off can you imagine that that's like the cold war on steroids that's the most fearful thing that you can possibly imagine you don't know when that there's sirens go off and you're you know having to evacuate to a, a safe place you don't know if you're going to die <clears throat> so when there wasn't any warning surely nagasaki and hiroshima they're smarter than that now they got warnings but so far two warnings nothing what do you think is going to happen after the third one when there's nothing happens you think people are going to become oblivious and i feel for the japanese i really do they're the highest adopters adopters of tech on the planet and they went from no tech to tech within i think it was two generations not just one but two and they've got more adopted more tech than anyone else they had televisions on their mobile phones before we could even dream of it do we get those oh no you can't have those doesn't work in your country but i want i want a tv on my mobile phone well we've gone parza now we've got like netflix <clears throat> we get to stream it but they had much better coverage and the ability to watch tv as i sort of love that about it so what would happen if america had what looked like an inbound missile coming it's ballistic so you can tell it's edited for you but if it happened in your town what would you think how would you think your fear would go up because that's really what's going on now how's it going to stop i don't know does he really want negotiations doesn't look like it <clears throat> i think from the description that the guy's hell bent on joining the club and he doesn't care or he's just going to do it anyway maybe he doesn't even want to join the club maybe he just wants to bomb the hell out of the rest of the people everywhere from what i've heard the us could flatten north korea entirely not even using nukes conventional weapons we saw the south korean bunker buster test that they bought from germany successful test this week but I think they'd have to launch bunker busters simultaneously once one every meter across the border between North and South Korea. Because, you know, they've had how many years? 40 years? 30 years? 40, 40, 40 years. <coughs> 40 years to dig tunnels to get themselves set up for like a rabbit warren of tunnels from North Korea to South Korea. Maybe they've already got them there. They could come up straight up into South Korea and into um, Seoul. Who knows? But if that happened, if you know, the idiocy of this entire thing broke out, I'm not sure World War would, would necessarily 
you know, play out. Maybe not. Is it could it be a proxy war between America and and China? It could. Maybe China doesn't want a part of it. You know, it's a million troops in North Korea. That's a lot. You know. <laughs> so maybe it's just all talk up from Halliburton who wants to sell weapons. Maybe they just want to showcase what all these new weapons are. I mean, I like the sound <clears throat> of there being no war. I do like economies growing, but it can't always grow. It can't perpetually get more and more and more. We just can't add that many people. So what I'm thinking is, my thoughts is maybe the guy's a little unhinged, but maybe he's got a, an agenda, or actually a, a single person kind of an agenda. They're going to have a plan. Maybe his plan is to simply join the club or get noticed or have, you know, a say. But what happens when he gets to that point? Is he happy? Does that end it all? Is that the line in the sand? And he goes, actually, I don't want to cross the line anymore. I'm, I'm done. Okay, so what are we what are we doing here, fellas? Order and pizza? Let's have some pizza. That's at the at the club, at the exec layer. How about a game of golf? I've been practicing for 40 years. I'm pretty good now. Do you think that's really what's gonna happen? Do you think Trump maybe will, you know, sort of sign a deal? It looks like the US has changed the UN's vision of this in the last few months. And it's only seems to be, you know, getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And, and just how much tighter can it get? Because if he doesn't care about the people, they're already having a real hard time. Real hard time. Hey, I've got, I've got no air. Hang on. What's going on? B, 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 six, six. Uh oh. Maybe one of Nighthood. Oh, you can't hear me anymore. But uh, for all of those that are still on, <clears throat> if I can call the station, looks like looks like I have the station again. Sorry if there's, there was dead air. And let me just type that in. Sorry for dead air. Anyway, let's hope that's still up and running wow extraordinary anyway sorry about that everyone <clears throat> apparently you can't talk about north korea or maybe that was exactly when nighthawk uh, renewed the service who knows we'll have to see what happens what else is there okay hurricanes i think i don't think i can talk anymore thanks uh in the chat room there i don't think i can talk anymore about north korea I like the international relations to be peaceful. I wish there weren't any wars, although the people who fund wars and profit from wars wouldn't like me to say that. But, uh, you know, you've got to worry. You absolutely have to worry about how that's all being driven. Okay. And for what outcome? Is it just going to be another weapons test like the first Iraq war? Going to go to war against Iraq because Saudis were on planes crazy uh the anniversary of 9 11 came and went we didn't talk about it we just didn't talk about it i think all the things that have been said have been said and i think um <clears throat> it is mecky it's it's mine and mecky's or mecky and my, mine our opinion that uh that has remained unchanged that building seven appears to have been demolished the other buildings we can't say for certain but it maybe just maybe uh, there were military planes rather than passenger planes and you know loss of life no i don't think anyone in who who would be planning this kind of event would ever care about the loss of lives couldn't care less the loss of business don't know but Silverstein certainly did have insurance and did argue to have two times the payout. The buildings had, uh, you know, asbestos in them and uh, demolishing them would have cost a fortune. There's a, a number of different avenues when you look at the money side of it. 
but really all in the in the end it could have been as simple as and this is only you know maybe it's fictitious scenario i don't want to get anyone offside but you know a nudge in the silverstein gets a nudge in the ribs from you know you know some maybe deep government project he says look we really want to go war against iraq and we need a way to do it are you in he goes what's in it for me or oh, you'll probably get an insurance payout in a new building oh cool no dramas we can solve you we will solve all of our problems by joining up i don't know that's my fictitious scenario is it possible yeah it's possible is it worrying absolutely is it worrying that that they don't care about lives uh, yeah i'd say yeah so we're just moving on that's why we didn't talk about it last week because it's just you know uh talk about the same thing we're whipping the same horse that's the same dead horse it's it is really done and i don't think we'll ever find out unless the right person was in power who was so bucking the trend that they'd be able to reveal all this maybe only if maybe there wasn't this same you know presidential election maybe they just plucked someone's name out of a hat like really chose someone that didn't get paid for the job oh that's trump again but maybe it's someone who grew up in the u.s like everyone else and wasn't yeah you know created to be the president from a young age didn't go to all those things and didn't attend all of those places i don't know i'm just i'm just making this up i i think maybe it should be a council it shouldn't be an individual i think the council should maybe have you know uh, maybe one person per you know per million or something like that you'd have 250 people at the table that's a big council and that council of people had you know maybe a, a five-year life on the council and that's the most time you could spend on it and maybe it was like lotto you you wanted to be in it so you bought i'm just making this up maybe bought a ticket <clears throat> so that would perpetuate the idea but no plan can ever be for anything shorter than 20 years all plants must have an operational life of 20 years that's about what it is changing the the hand dryers in, in the local you know in the public toilets okay well let's make sure that we're on track for this for 20 years we're going to do it and we're going to review it and it's going to be constant and no one can change it and that's the way it's going to be removing money and everything from politics removing you know advertising donations removing leaving accountability you know i think all those things are so possible that might make a big difference it might make a big difference to to, to the world but okay so we've got nine minutes before the break and guess what i reckon it is talk about hurricanes now this one's really easy irma i had a problem with hurricane irma my problem was and it was exasperated by talking to my friends because I'll start with them first. My friend's impression of the media hype that led to the encounter from the American's point of view, not Cuba and, and not the other outlying islands because they were really devastated by it and that was awful. So awful, but Irma and Florida, right, that's, that was where they were isolating their opinion to and my friends said pretty much that they were disappointed that it wasn't more powerful and i said how can you say that how can you say that you're disappointed that it was more powerful and then we all had a bit of a laugh about it because that's such a preposterous way of thinking I said, but you, you realize that people could be hurt and killed and devastation and, you know, insurance premiums and, and destruction and rebuilding and, you know, companies and personal assets and, and you know, small businesses. Oh, they, they would be all devastated. Because I know. 
but it was talked up to be the, like the the biggest storm that's ever going to happen ever so far in the recorded history of everything and it downgraded really quickly and then you know <clears throat> so there was just a 24 7 broadcast of of wet weather men not even getting blown over just standing there in a wind and it was water so you saw all that but it was the people's pictures afterwards that meant so much more the photos of the gulf of mexico on that side where the water was gone it's like the tide went out too far like there was about to be a tsunami where do we see that oh that's right in was it portugal and uruguay as well in the lead up to this where the water just went out for a couple of days i'm like i'm i'm, I'm gonna be at a friend's place the water just went out a hundred feet lower suddenly that is unusual we don't see that every time normally there's a storm surge and the water comes in and it's all there and there you go but it didn't so it didn't do that the, the water seemed to have like there's only a finite amount of water and to have the storm surge it had to come from somewhere and so the tide went out and didn't come back for a while <clears throat> that's something else and i haven't seen that i've not seen that anywhere else it seemed irma related and so that becomes maybe a little bit of weather modification there's so much my goodness me there is so much going on here right i actually thought that it was a relief that it wasn't so destructive thank goodness yay but now what are we facing now well jose doesn't look like it's gonna hit the continent it looks like it's maybe it's track showed it going around in circles for a little bit don't know why maybe that's what weather manipulation can do maybe you can steer them around like a you know radio control car radio controlled is the key here harp it let's harp it into circles let's drive it up the coast maybe threaten just like the just like um on Solaris's show the host the the guest on Solaris's show was talking about you know steering them around maybe it's possible just maybe you can steer them maybe there is a mechanism or a tool or like a video console controller so to speak that it's that easy they can just drive them around <clears throat> but of course no one's going to ever own up to it you can't own up to being able to do it because then you get get blamed for all of them absolutely all of them so it's gone around in circles it doesn't look like it's going to hit the coastline it's going to go up past new york it'll be a big rain dump and then that's the end of that but we've still got another two behind that so we've got maria and lee and they're following really closely the irma track at the moment so is is this the future because we already had two then irma close now another two it was is this it i mean it's hurricane season and tons of hurricanes have hit the us you know it's a, a couple a year but has it really been this prevalent i don't know you look back through the records and tell me whether this is the way it is because i i don't know if it's like this in the in the northern hemisphere what's going to happen in our summer like i said last week you only have to warm the ocean up to a particular temperature and it's game on for hurricanes or typhoons or cyclones same thing different location on the planet i wanted to see when they started talking it up when they started talking up 
Irma and saying, you know what, this thing's been the most powerful thing ever. I wanted to make a Cat 6. I didn't want Cat 5 anymore. That's old. That's We've done that. Don't need Cat 5 anymore. Cat 6, yeah. Yeah, so to joke about the severity of a storm with my friends thinking that we could outdo each other in in just how bad we could be is that extraordinary i truly don't want anyone to get ever get hurt ever i don't want any animals to die i don't want any insects or any other creatures no loving creatures on the planet to have any harm come to them i don't want the economy to get ruined i don't want you know all the things i want what we do best to be the norm i don't want what we do the worst i don't want the way we think to be the worst i don't want the economy to be the worst I, i'd like it to all get better i want it to get better i think it i don't think us at the bottom layer can make those things happen i think we can do our little bits to make our local lives better but if you notice our local lives didn't change it's only that upper thing that changes all the time either in our favor or against our favor or you know wages are going down or this the, the economy is terrible what did we do different we didn't do anything different our lives remain the same they can get worse financially let's hope that doesn't happen touch wood but in our realm we didn't do anything to make the change I've got about a minute left. Think about this during the break. That most of the money that isn't being spent on the low front end wor workers in companies is being vacuumed up by the executives and their huge bonuses. This is only a short break. We'll see you on the other side of it. It's a station break. Listen to the advertising and find a show you like. Also, take the time to donate. There'll be questions after. Welcome back to Dave and Mechie's Shiny Side Out on freedomslips.com on the number one listener supported talk radio on the net. So push the domate, sorry, the domate. Goodness, but I don't, I, I've looked everywhere on the website, and I can't find a domate button. Uh, I found a donate button though, and you can push that or subscribe to the archives for $5 a month. I'd like to say hello to everyone who is a new listener follower or subscriber we're glad you're on board we really are because you're following us in our journey to help your journey easier we're like on point for your journey i don't know tell me if that worked or not doesn't really matter hey there in the chat room by the way thank you very much for letting me know about the show going offline uh but the uh, the youtube will have remained because i'm doing local recording now so they can they can well, as bender says kiss my shiny metal hmm. anyway <clears throat> you want to get yourself some great merchandise from the station's website buy a cd of your favorite host shows for a previous season year season or possibly an emp proof thumb drive with survival documents as well or a, a pack of 75,000 seeds which is pretty good but you need to follow the instructions when you push the donate button uh, or previous or prior to doing that so that you understand what you're doing and what you need to say in there to be able to receive your gift for your gift you get a gift thank you and remember this is listener supported so you really do need to donate otherwise it won't exist anymore and all the servers and all of the the uh, the streaming 
uh, services and monthly costs and everything that are involved in that are being covered but only by you so if you can um you know do what i do just subscribe to the chat sorry so sub subscribe to not the chat take two just subscribe to the archives that's five dollars a month you know if everyone did that this station would be probably able to pay its hosts imagine that Mackie will hear that one day and and appreciate it so if you're in the u.s you can call in on 347 six double eight two nine zero two or if you have skype on your either your, your cell phone or a laptop or a pc or a tablet there's a contact you can add called freedom screen that's f-r-e-e-d-o-m-s-c-r-e-e-n all one word and that will pass through to the host that's currently on which in this case is me but if uh, it was Solaris to show it would go to Solaris etc if you live in Kentucky though <clears throat> you can pick us up on FM WZCR 101.3 or if you're anywhere else in, in the entire world you can listen via the internet the internet or your cell phone carrier and or your hardline or nbn or you know you oh, forget all the names of all the other things adsl uh, whatever it happens to be via a website so <clears throat> immediately i'll say that you can go to freedomslips.com but you might get an app on your smart device so you you can do it through tunein.com web radio central receive a mobile app freedom slips mobile talk stream live which is really cool stream finder internet and then a hyphen and the word radio.com radio tuner which is t-u-n-a at the end of radio radio ways radio online or you can get the shiny side out app i made that one it's pretty cool it works for me and hopefully it works for you too just reminding everyone this is show number 288 mecky is a wall that right absence without leave yes well actually not really he's just absent he told me where it was going to be what's going on and he hasn't been able to locate fast enough internet to be able to perform on the radio tonight so sorry about all of his fans who appreciate mecky being on air hopefully it's both of us but you know what can you do can't believe please everyone all the time now um having said all that there's a couple of things that i wanted to to talk about now i'm going to open this up to a round table so should you feel compelled to talk to me to raise an issue to give me some information maybe ask me some questions can be about anything i've ever spoken about or even something i don't know about maybe test me do something like that you can do that by just ringing in 347-688-2902 if you're in the usa all right so what i want to do in the meantime while you're all busy dialing in to the station to come on air with me that what you can do is hear me out with these ones so high temps and solar flares i seem to have found a weird correlation on the very day that the earth was being bombarded last week by the thank you very much by the way um alphabet i'll know you as alphabet from here on in the person's identity in the chat room is the letters a through z all of them and uh, since you're able to make up your own uh, avatar your own name you can be anyone you want or you can just use a random one that it creates when you jump in the chat room at freedomslips.com now 
this week we had 36 degrees temperature in winter that's pretty hot it's not desert hot but i mean it's hot it's hot for winter it's not like we live in a desert we're coastal in sydney so it got pretty windy i mean very windy there was wind warnings the sun was so bright that you had to squint i mean that's not normally what happens in winter so think about that the max temp was within a grit degree within one degree it wasn't one degree off it was inside one degree of the highest recorded temp for that part of the month september but being the first week of september actually the second just into the second week of september uh that's quite rare it normally happens at the end of september so it's weeks in advance of when that highest temp for this month normally occurs it normally occurs around the last couple of days since the earth's orbit is an ellipse we're getting closer to the sun you know on our way towards being closer so that's why it gets hotter for us in the southern hemisphere than it does for summer in the northern hemisphere and the earth isn't centered so the sun isn't centered around the ellipse it's more towards what one end <clears throat> so just letting it go all right uh my brains go jello on air i'm sorry about that uh but you know practice will fix that or you could just do what i did last week and just pour my brain out on air that's a funny show i sort of started to uh i, I went in in a in a fashion i spoke in a fashion that was like just opening up my brain so one idea led to another and another and another and another and i i didn't i i ended up some of my friends said i ended up to sound like i was in the uh, psychiatrist couch being asked questions very funny and if you want to have a listen to it's on youtube it's show number 287 but you know don't blame me for the two hours you won't get back and i apologize profusely for everyone else now who had to endure it on air without being able to push pause or stop or fast forward now high temps and solar flares the day we experienced that high temp was the day that the sun's solar flare which unfortunately for ed dames was pointing away from the earth it wasn't a kill shot but it had it been pointed at the earth and you know at least earth facing side it was just like around the corner and even so active particles went everywhere even though it wasn't even pointed at us when it blew the cameras all showed the same you know quantity of active particles coming from the sun like they would if it was a straight on shot so if it happened to be a straight on shot the kill shot ed dame style and if you just google his name you'll know why i'm saying it i'm not disputing the fact that he's you know forecasting this happening that he's looking with his mind to see what this future is and that he sees the kill shot because it's completely possible i mean this, that thing could come around again and the next time it's pointing at us it could go off it's like i suppose like a version of russian roulette it's only a matter of time again before it happens again like i think it was the 20s when the electricity wires started arcing on their own or sorry the telegraph wires started arcing on their own in those days we didn't have very much that could die very little that was affected directly which would cause it to cease to exist like our cell phones in the microwave that ceases their existence your electric automobile sorry your fuel driven or electric automobile an active fully working automobile with that kind of emp could also be terrible that could cease it to exist it just becomes a place to have dinner what do you do with your cell phone 
if it doesn't work like if it's bricked do you use it for you know to put your hot coffee in a mug is it like a a mug rest i don't know so just think about that for a minute so I think I've covered that one, so the high temps and solar flares. But what I really wanted to talk about, and I'm a, I'm a tech kind of person, I'm a techie. I like the high adoption rates. I like when people walk with their feet and choose a different brand if they become disappointed with one or another. I do like that. I think it's very important that we do that. You know, how about the people who... Um, and I'm not one of these, but who will camp out overnight for the brand new phone and just leaving the brand disassociated at the moment. Like I said, I'm not one of those. I think waiting an extra month won't hurt me. I think it's amusing to see that the hype is so bad that these people, for no other intent, no other intent at all but to just have a bragging right that they lined up and got the new phone is hilarious is that who we've is that how the media has trained these people to behave is that really where it is i mean for no other reason you don't do it when a new car is released do we well i hope you don't i've not seen that in the media you know, Harry Potter books, I saw people doing that. And we, that's fine. I think it's okay to be something that isn't all the time. Not every year. Maybe. But anyway, so for those of you, or those of you who haven't or have, got a smartphone in their hand, maybe right now, or your own one, do you think that the new iPhone and what it's being praised as this new thing to unlock the phone, you simply look at it? Do you think this works to your advantage? Do you think this is a positive invention? The fingerprint which was there before. I mean, both brands did the fingerprint. Some did it, one brand did it better than the other, and then they sort of equalized again. And this is that sort of counter invention, invention, counter invention, invention, stepping process that they're, they're doing. I mean, really, there's not much difference. The, the phones from a couple of years ago to now except don't hate me except for the screen resolution and the camera resolution and then the techie friends of mine would also throw in there the memory and the cpu power so the amount of cores while they've been increasing the battery life has been getting better maybe through app management that's the the thing that's the most prevalent uh, contributed towards better batteries because the screens are getting bigger and the batteries getting bigger yeah maybe i don't know you don't open them anymore so we can never see the bad the bad things that have happened in tech were mm, the the android samsung android device which was purportedly catching fire and that was the biggest the most devastating thing that could have ever happened to that brand however in every single device that they tried to replicate it it never eventuated every phone sorry pardon me every phone that was was received in a huge um, recall where they offered you any other phone from their stock at all the, the airlines banned it as well my goodness airlines refused to let you on board if you had one but guess what 
mean, that was probably a good thing. It didn't want to affect their hugely expensive plane and their reputation. However, it, it hurt Samsung's reputation greatly. I'm a bit of a Samsung fan. I have a lot of their products. I do like them. But they're all in bed with the three-letter agencies and don't kid yourself if you think they're not. Okay, so knowing that they are and knowing that Samsung now tests every single device before it leaves, they have a little thing and it tests it to make sure it's not going to blow up and it's going to do all the things it says it does and it's not going to do the things the opposition say it's going to do. <laughs> because if you dig a little deeper into the the whole, you know, I forget what it's called now. The Samsung phone debacle with the battery and the blowing up and whatever. None of those were ever substantiated. None of those. While the proof is there, the phone was dead. It seems, when you dig it up, that it might have been planned by the opposition, by Apple. I'm not saying, I didn't say it was, I said might have been. Some people are alleging that Apple actually did it as a warfare thing, a, you know, large business to large business damage their reputation. Who knows? I mean, it's quite possible that this stuff goes on all the time. We don't even ever see it. This was one of those ones that got out in the public. I mean, recalls, product recalls are for safety reasons. I get it. But anyways, it's, what I wanted to talk about, though, was their new invention, this face recognition. So, Siri and the Google Voice thing, both voice recognizing but only work when you're online. It's not, doesn't work on its own. Doesn't work if you're offline. Doesn't work if you're in a Faraday cage, which will make you offline. Doesn't work. So to make it work, to make Siri work, to make the Google voice thing work, you've got to be online. So how does that work? And how does it only work when you're online? It's because when you speak, a file is sent to their main server of you speaking. That audio clip is sent to them. They process it and send the text back inside the application. It's all invisible. And suddenly it's, oh yeah, that's what they said. Or the computer does something. So that's what it does. Google we had been doing it for a little while longer than Siri existed and started to do stuff with it like make an online translator where you just simply speak into the phone and text in a different language will appear like that's cool but you know what it was really doing it was analyzing and correcting and rewriting itself to perfect that voice recognition by taking samples from everybody, all their speech patterns, their grammar in all the languages from around the world and making it this thing, making it a thing that does something. Granted, Google pretty good at doing that sort of process. When they bought Boston Dynamics, they quickly accelerated robot production the Google car, 18 months into it, while university students have been working on this thing for 15 years, or well, I don't know how long it actually was, but it was certainly more than five years. That after five, at least five, I, I, should, I should have done the, the research on this one, but I know that university students have been doing this for a long, long time. And that was attempting to automate a vehicle so that it can navigate a course and annually they had an event and the, while their cars, all the other cars in the event are colliding it's to, you know, with things and going off the road and having a hard time, 
with all the programs and the huge computers and a boot full of processors and batteries. Despite all of that and all the years of production, their cars are still failing these tests. Where in parallel to that, and not competing in the event from what I understand, was the Google car, which could drive at, you know, 35 miles an hour in a car park with just traffic cones set up at squeal. So at the very limit of the tire's ability to drive and not crash. What? Wait a minute. So university students, the same kind of people. So students, whether they've graduated or not, who cares? Students, like the brightest minds that we've got in the techiest, you know, geekiest components inside universities were trying, attempting to make automated cars. And then Google just walks up and goes, oh, that car, that car thing's pretty cool. Let's have a go at that. Oh, look, we're done already. And, you know, it works. And shortly after that, they've registered the, the vehicle with the, with the government. And now it's driving around on its own and self-driving car. And wait, 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 let's, let's back this up a minute. So how could they do it? Was that because they had an unlimited battery? Sorry, battery. Unlimited funding? For Google, that's probably where the, their equivalent. You're right. So I, someone's just posted in, in the chat the self-driving car. However, the military versions of that aspect has been when they purchased, for instance, Boston Dynamics. And they did that at the conclusion of the World Robot Competition. And I don't, don't hate me, I don't, I don't remember the name, because I don't think the name of it's important. But once again, university students have been putting together, you know, bipedal robots to... You know, being tested through a, a rigorous, rigorous amount of, sorry, they've been tested rigorously in an amount of tests, opening doors, climbing ladders, doing all these things, you know, climbing over debris and all these things that are in the, in the test. So that they're able to, um, you know, work with such a diverse amount of things in order to be able to have a robot that would be you know, not just suited to opening doors, not just suited to climbing stairs or climbing ladders, but one that was truly autonomous, one that acted more like a human, one that could get around and do things. Imagine how functional, if something passed all those tests with flying colors, you'd want it. You'd want that thing. Thinking about Sony, you know, and, and uh, was it not Mazda? Oh, um, not Honda. So Honda made the robot, which is a bipedal robot, and but it's particularly useless at doing the other tasks, like climbing a ladder. It's okay in an office environment. It's okay to wave at people and dance and do those things that those little mini miniature robots can do. But this is the thing. Google buys the winner, which was the Atlas Row robot from Boston Dynamics. It bought Boston Dynamics and decided to, oh, look, look what we did to the car. We can do this to robots. You should see them now. These are fully autonomous, battery powered, electric motors being able to pick things up. There's even one that has Segway. Instead of legs, it's got a Segway. It's able to control itself and move around and be awesome for picking up stuff in a factory. There's one that just picks things up and puts it in shelves. And there's a... <laughs> I, I commented, when I watched the video clip of this robot, when it's able to pick up a box and put it on a shelf, and, and then there's like an operator testing it, right? He's got a hockey stick and he belts the box out of its hands and the robot... You know, I, if the robot had an AI thinking, it would go, uh, he's hit it out of my hands again. I've got to pick it up. Okay, that's simple AI number one. You, you get a complicated AI down the track and you do the same thing in the testing. It's going, I'm going to remember you, buddy. You're the person who made my life awful. 
guess what? I'm, you're going to be the first on the barbecue when the revolution comes, when the robots all band together and Skynet's active, and I'm coming after you. They, I'm sure the robots right now are, are putting together like a list of people they hate because of all the stuff that we've done to them during the tests. Like tr attempted to kick them over on, on, a, on a frozen car park with, you know, like an inch of ice on the car park, putting it there to suffer, trying to walk, and it's walking well and coping. But, you know, the, the guy testing it kicks it from the side, pushes it over, and says, oh, I've got to get up again. Turns and looks at the person who did it, goes, well, I remember you. You know, the robot, the Atlas robot now is so good that it's, you know, I imagine comically that in its top pocket it's going to have a picture of Sarah Connor. That's how scary then and how realistic it is. Elon Musk, who's clearly in the same level or echelon, and that's a pun if you know what echelon is, he's in the same executive team that's been putting out press releases against artificial intelligence and robots saying, <laughs> I reckon we should be stopping this stuff. This is crazy what we're doing right now. We shouldn't be making things that can kill us because they're just going to kill us. I mean, it's Terminator. <clears throat> it's so the Terminator that could happen that he wants the brakes put on these projects. Like, we should do everything we should. We should do everything we can to make our lives better. But don't make a machine that's going to think it's better than us straight away. Because that's only going to go in one direction. And I don't mean the band, 1D. It's going to end up that that AI is going to sim simply consider us useless and turn us into batteries, like in the Matrix. Or decide to kill us, like in Terminator. Because we're useless. But they don't need us anymore. We're a waste of space. Imagine if the AI in, in, a, in a robot species just, be, just said to itself, they're not looking after the planet. I'm sure we can do a better job with that. These guys are polluting it. Look what they're doing. They don't even care. Right, it's time to take out the garbage, so to speak. But they could end it for us while we slept. They'd have a plan. Imagine that. That'd be a great movie, wouldn't it? <laughs> only, only the crazy conspiracy theorist who was... Who had... Uh, oh, what's that? I can't remember. I... I for some reason today, I've just had a, a real hard time remembering things. Let's hope it's not, uh, that's not, uh, uh, what's the word? There you go. Done it again. That is, that is not going to perpetuate past today. Um, oh, the, the, the problem where you can't sleep. Imagine. So there's a conspiracy theorist who's, has insomnia, who obviously can't sleep, and He's the only one that's that sees it happening. That's a great to make a great film because he can't sleep when all the others are sleeping. And they're getting killed by their AI. I'd, be, oh, I'd pay to watch that film. I'd pay to write it if someone wants to pay me. I'd sew that sucker up so tight everyone would want to see it. Anyway, do you really think that the face recognition? makes it safe because if the fingerprints right say a policeman pulls you um, um, pardon me if a policeman pulls you over in australia your mobile your mobile phone or your cell phone is thank you very much um in the chat room there it was a bit late i did get to it in the end but insomnia is correct and if you if you play the word insomniac backwards but only after you've said it in a weird way and you say the word I must sleep in a weird way and then play it backwards they're very very similar 
It's very strange. Anyhow, so a cell phone in Australia is considered by the police as a diary. And according to the law, if you have a diary in a car, that's admissible evidence. It's also mandatory that you hand it across to a police officer should they want to have a look at it. If it's a PIN number and you were unconscious, they wouldn't be able to unlock it. So they say. Of course, they've got access to everything, and I don't believe that they can't unlock it. And in, in course, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, John McAfee said uh, we're in that iPhone case. He said, give me the phone for 20 minutes, I'll get you the data off it. Hmm. So anyway, because it's a diary, think about this. Imagine this is the world we live in right now. Fingerprint. You're unconscious, they lift your phone up, they, they, discover, they discover that the, uh, the phone is not protected by a pin, but rather the fingerprint, and they just hold your fingers up until it unlocks, and now they've got access to it. Well, if it's face recognition, does your, does your eyes, do your, sorry, do your eyes have to be open? Maybe they can just hold the phone up to you, it unlocks, and then they, that's it. And you didn't have, you didn't have a say your voice is no sorry not voice recognition but you're you're no longer given an opportunity to, to decline it or you're in cuffs and you can't stop them from doing it just by simply holding it up and, and making it see your face to unlock the phone consider the implications of where that's going of course <clears throat> the phone knows who you are at the moment, my phone knows who, well, it knows my fingerprints. It knows my voice because I've already used the Google system. So if my computer, which is currently on right now, is connected to the internet and I've got a, any of my browsers open, especially the Chrome browser, if they had an extension in that browser which enabled them to be able to hear what I'm saying, which they do, or the the three-letter agency is connected to, the, to that back door that's available in my computer, and they decided to listen, or they're just streaming back text telemetry from what I'm saying back to their huge servers. Think about what that's going to mean when they also connect your face to what's going on. Now, if you have been living under a rock or for some reason you're from the past and you've not caught up to where we are technologically today with Facebook or social media and you're taking photos, or you notice if you don't know already that Facebook can automatically tag you in photos or your friends in photos that you've taken because it knows what they look like. It knows who they are. And this is Facebook. And if you tell me that the CIA or the government doesn't have a backdoor in a Facebook, I, <laughs> you're kidding yourself. But now, having face recognition, it's going to connect your fingerprint, your email address, and you to your face. It knows where you are. Your phone knows everything about you. Even if you turn locations off. If you turn location off, it's just cosmetic. That's just what you see. So what are the implications of connecting your face to it? Well, they're all going to do it. <laughs> that's just what's going to happen all the providers of phones are going to do it but it's how they use that data in the background could you imagine the database and how effective that would be you can imagine how much value that would add to a spammer should they hack that data or they install an app on your phone that does the same thing now that they've heard this is active huh if someone tried to unlock my phone, I have a security program on there that will email me a photo of the person attempting it. 
as if they fail or if they take too long failing if someone stolen my phone and i tell the same applications you know internet website on my phone logged in as my account i can have it record audio and video it will what other apps have you installed on your smart device which have asked for permission to access photos camera and your microphone what have they what other applications have done that think about what you had to say yes to or if you didn't say yes huh, think about those that didn't ask for permission but still yet still have access these are the things that i think are really important this is the world we're going into we're we're not walking into what i would say today is the 1984 of today of 2017 if you don't know what 1984 is the george orwell book that was written back in 1948 which then was a reasonably good place the government didn't have much control over you the police state hadn't happened there was no over governing view of everyone's behavior or communication for that matter warrants really did need to be obtained to do everything against your person wow so so what happened 1984 the book was written and all of the three letter agencies went hey you know what that's awesome look at that we can what we you mean we can control people yeah well, we do that through the media oh. um well can we monitor all communications sure let's work on that what about what about mind control yeah we do that what about being able to track where everyone is yeah we well we'll work on that as well well guess what it's all done every last piece of it is done mind control think about what you see think about all the signs you see all the media you see think about the media ownership think about how the media works hand in hand with the government to control you and they do and they've admitted it you that's all you need to do is just think about those things so when you get large corporations i think the iphone has about 30 percent market penetration not 60 percent or maybe it's um, oh, that's right so it's 30 percent apple 60 percent android but not necessarily samsung and the rest is a small sm a spattering of a smattering of um uh some legacy handsets which is still off grid you know you can still be tracked they know who you are from your bill and maybe some blackberries as well that people are still running in the windows phones which have now been discontinued <clears throat> so 90 percent of the people with a phone can be tracked 90 percent of those people that can be tracked we know who you are we know what you sound like we know your speech patterns we know everything about you and now we're about to know what you look like but connected in a way that you've never known before not simply the photo that you want taken of you but the one that you don't want taken the one that you didn't approve you haven't activated the camera to say i want a photo of me and for all the ladies out there the one without makeup the one where you weren't maybe the one you just woke up to unlock your phone with in the morning i'm not saying you're vain i'm just saying it's the less desirable images of you which it'll have access to the police can use against your permission well without your permission that is the concern 
you know how far are we away from the are you sarah connor oh i don't know like it's the next step it's the next there isn't a, a step between here and the are you sarah connor terminator not the liquid one i mean the t2000 so i hope i'm right with the t2000 or my friends are gonna really come down on me like a ton of bricks so or was it the 1000 oh now i've got to google it <laughs> um terminator model numbers all right so if i don't get this right thank you very much uh terminator wiki all the terminator robots ranked no okay so maybe it's a t1 let me have a look here it comes up oh i have to do this in advance you know okay so the t800 was the original one that arnie played the t1000 was made of liquid metal no oh, okay sorry about that so the t800 all right so don't hate me thank you very much i got in before the haters <sighs> crowd goes wild so i be, between today and the next show i want you to think about where you can be identified walking down the street where the cameras are take a minute when you're in a store to look around for the cameras i mean they're not, they're not hidden you can see them they're 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 in plain sight but think about how the software might be used to determine where you're looking what you're doing the choices you're making in in the in the market in the supermarket you know did you pick up an item put it down did you examine the pricing along the shelves and then make an educated informed decision about which one you should choose in Australia, for all of the products on the shelves, to, despite the brands having different measured quantities, qualities, or any other distinguishing features between them when they're all the same product, just to try and fool you into believing that, that when, you know, if let's consider them all being exactly the same product, but just in simply different packaging, which isn't the case, but if that was the case, if it was the case in my scenario how would you choose which one to buy if they were all different prices well in australia we've got you know like either per gram or per kilogram a cost so if one was you know two dollars 37 and the other one was you know eight dollars 15 then it would tell us for the same weight of object this is how much it is either it's if it's even if it's something as simple as toilet tissue toilet rolls so it tells you how much per roll it is or actually per square of toilet paper so you can say oh that one's you know eight cents less than the brand that i normally buy you know so if if the company that is putting stuff on shelves has to pay for the shelf at eye height they want to know that they're getting a return and so the cameras in the supermarkets i know this for a fact are being made if not already in the store you're in but they're developing for that one but i know that there is a number of stores that already have it in place and they're working with the data they're able to examine your choice they already know what's on the shelves they know where they're placed they know how you make decision and so they can connect you at the checkout when you're checking or even automated checkout by your loyalty cards if you're not paying cash what you chose as a result of your decision making process who lives in your house how many people there are their children or their pets they know how often you purchase stuff and what you're going to purchase next so the part of the data that comes out of that would be awesome if that was all they did was just send you stuff based on your usage oh you know for the last five years you've been using you know this brand of toilet paper and it's going to send you some We've deducted it from your account and you go well that's pretty cool i didn't have to pay for that well sorry i didn't have to go to the stop the shops for it i didn't have to get in the car and drive to the store and get it and make a choice and have to choose choose again they just sent it to me 
I mean, that sounds like a pretty cool world. But look what's involved in having to do that. And how many people have access to the data? And where is the data? What country does data live in? And is every single company that can touch that data obliged by, by regulations, the same regulations, where they're not going to sell it off to someone else? Is that going to happen? Absolutely going to happen at some point. And that'll cause a revolution of the way data is stored and who has access to it and how it's used. If only there was a rule that said, you know, data can only be used positively for the, for the ownership of the data remains the person themselves and not the company in which you were engaged with. You should be able to ring any company in the world that you've had dealings with and say, I want a record of all of my transactions with you. Or, in the case of one of our shopping centers, any one of the big data reports that I appear on, I want to see how you're using that. Think about how that might be possible. I think there's going to be a big cloud revolution against the cloud where something happened where there's an event where where it causes a mistrust and the mistrust is so large that it will turn us away from something as popular and seemingly too big to fail something like facebook or twitter or one of the other platforms it's just so prevalent you know, I started making phone calls in Facebook now, because you can. But the thing I wanted to bring your attention to, just between this week and next week, is the second item and the only other one. And that's a software we use called Grammarly. If you're using it now and you like it, great. I'm not stopping you from doing it. Who owns it? And what can they see? since it only works online, like the face recognition, like the Google Voice thing, like Siri. So it only means that it's not software that you load on your machine and it's doing it all locally or offline. It's sending what you're typing somewhere else. So if you were doing a paper at a unit for a university, if it's your thesis or whatever, and you want to get the spelling right and the grammar right, that I don't think you should be at university studying what you're studying if you don't have perfect grammar maybe but anyway that's another story if you're doing it because maybe you shouldn't be doing whatever course it is maybe you should be doing you know english language or another language whatever your primary language is maybe you should learn that and get that down first before doing your thesis but anyway all that aside whatever you're typing in it's going somewhere it's being evaluated is it being stored don't know is there a huge database of everything that everyone's written once they've installed Grammarly? Is there anything inside of that data which is sensitive? Do you work for a large corporation where that's IP, intellectual property? Is it intellectual property of the, of the business? Is it sensitive IP? Maybe a research program that you're working on where that information is leaving your company and going somewhere else? into a big pool of lovely, delicious data where people can examine it for whatever they want. Is that what's going on? I think it is. I think this is like the drugs in sport and everyone's just turned their eyes to their, you know, away from it. So you know what? I don't care. I'm sure it goes on, but I don't want to know. Because I... There's some music! Perfectly timed. Stay tuned for a roundtable with Jeb Bear. Catch me next week with Mechie, hopefully. Same time, same place. See you then. Take care, everyone.